You know what? I just feel like a glass half full kind of guy today. Are you on drugs? At least they got a point. They did. Freddy still looks spectacular. Steady even. And we got to see Patrick Marlowe turn back the clock against Roberto Luongo. That was a great shot. I can't wait till it comes out on VHS. Hi! Leafs Nation! Stand witness! Bronx and Lucas! Oh, biblical! Austin Matthews is the lead! Why do I watch hockey? Stressfully! Mostly! Are you in the Leafs! Half win. Eh. 2-1 to the Florida Panthers. They're trying to sell hockey in Sunrise, they want fans to come to the games, and all I know is during 3-on-3 three -three overtime, all the fans were out of their seats. I'm not gonna whine and complain about the shootout because the Leafs lost, I'm gonna whine and complain about the shootout because it's bad. But that's all the whining and complaining I feel like doing today. You know what? I feel like I just got up, you ever just get up on the right side of the bed? The coffee just kicks in the perfect way. I ran out of coffee cream and had to use almond milk and it tasted like liquefied popsicle sticks, but I still feel great. Sometimes you get nothing from the coffee or you get Sleepy jitters. That's when the coffee doesn't wake you up as much as it just reanimates your corpse. No, today I feel good, and I see a lot of Leaf fans angry about this game. And yeah, there's a lot of things to be angry about. But I was angry after the Arizona loss, and you guys picked me up. I'm gonna try to pick you up today. That's it's my turn. So let's look at this game. The Leafs start the game great, and by great I mean they got shelled again. They got outshot like ten to nothing in the first ten minutes again. I need to know what this is about. I need to figure this out. Is it actually the team not starting on time? Is it them not putting in their full effort when it starts. I, I can't be that simple. The one thing I've noticed is whenever this happens to the Leafs, which is often, their first shot on goal of the game, or their first real attempt, after five, six, seven, eight minutes, is usually a scoring chance. Sometimes it'll go just wide, or it'll hit a leg in front, so it doesn't register as a shot, but it was a scoring chance. Not letting the goalie feel the puck, I'm not saying that's a strategy. But for the first eight minutes or so, it's just Panthers, 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 until the Leafs finally come the other way. Connor Brown, chance, Tyler Bozak, chance! Both stopped by Luongo, but they were in there. So I wonder if it's just like a boxer in the first two rounds of a match or something. They're just feeling them out. I just wish they could feel them out a little more actively because as we saw for the rest of the game, the Leafs were the better team. They were. Shots were 15 to 7 Florida in the first. Trash. 12 11 Leafs in the second. Okay. And 23 to 13 in the third. Oh, there you are. 4 2 Florida in overtime. Well, don't take a penalty. And the entire time for the first half of the game, Freddie's just stonewalling them. Just stonewalling the Panthers. Rebounds doesn't matter. Stop it. Panthers trying to leave their mark on the man from Denmark. Can't do it. Trying to put a hurting on the man from Herning. Can't do it. Trying to put the pain on the Leafs. Great Dane. And they can't do it. Which only means one thing. When the Panthers do score, it's going to be really stupid. And it was. <laughs> Nick Bukesev throws it in front off Connor Karakoff, Freddy, and in a couple bones I have to pick with hockey statistics on this one. One, if you've been listening to the podcast lately, one of the things we discussed is save percentage. I was saying on the podcast, if someone just errantly throws the puck at the net and your own teammate bats it into your net, should you be penalized? Should that go against your save percentage? And that led to a greater discussion, yada, yada, yada. Well, that counted as a goal against Freddy, and it was a goal, but your save percentage is shots against versus saves. This goal... Shot? I don't know, just food for thought. I'm just saying that some goals are not the goalie's fault, and this one was very not Freddy's fault. Feel bad for Carrick. He's had a rough few games. Oh, is Babcock gonna go to Polak? There's back to backs coming up, please. No! That, that, that. We're being positive today. But the coffee's still in there in the brain. The other hockey stat that I have a bone to pick with, but I'm gonna be gentle about it, is Bugstad threw it in front of the net and it bounced off a Leafs defender, and in they awarded two assists. So you know how we've talked about primary assist versus secondary assist, and sometimes the secondary assist is more important than the primary assist? This was not one of those games. But I will chill because in Henrik Hoppala's first career NHL game, he picks up his first career NHL point. Hoppala is how I choose to say it. I love saying Hoppala. It reminds me of something my Nona used to say. Whenever you fall down or drop something as a kid, Hoppala! I googled what it means for translation and I couldn't find anything, so I think it was just nonsense. But it was fun to say nonsense, Hoppala! I had the sneaking suspicion that coffee was meth. So the Leafs head into the third period down one nothing, and they do what they have done many times recently is they go, okay, let's actually be the Leafs. The young, scary, high fly and Deacon dangling, speeding by a crazy offensive juggernaut that we were all sold at the beginning of the season. Specifically, they shoot the thing. Oh, darling, don't you just love it when they shoot the thing? I wonder if that's part of it, too, when they're getting shelled in the first period is they won't just shoot the thing! Ironically, though, with almost exactly six minutes to go in the game, it was a sick passing play that got the Leafs on the board. Connor Brown streaking in two-on-one. Can he get the pass through? Yes, he does! Nas gonna get it up and over just pass in general. I don't even care how he does it. Pass for Roberto Luongo! Eight-game point streak for Nas! Nazem Kadri, Bob Ross, thank you very much, and we have a tie game. Oh, is that a nice shot by Nazem? Oh, is that a nice pass by Connor Brown? But I think the star of this play, 
besides those two, is Patrick Marlowe. This is an example of a secondary assist that I think should count. And something that I think Babcock should show the guys in practice, like these little plays are just the little things that create champions. The little things that can be the difference between you and the other guys. I think it was Morgan Riley sends the puck up to Patrick Marlowe just beyond the Leafs' own blue line. He receives a pass, but he can't do much with it because there's a Florida player right there, right in his grill. Could smell his breath. Seeing that there's a winnable puck in front of him, the Florida defender attacks. Marlowe worked through all the pestering and bats it past him. Connor Brown is going the other way. Now you got a two-on-one. Now it's a lot of things. It's Kadri being open on the other wing. It's Connor Brown having the offensive awareness to charge forward. But both of those things are completely negated if Marlowe can't get to that puck. And he does. Kadri with a career high eight game point streak and just very quiet. Doesn't always completely take over whatever game he's in. He just needs to be in there and contributing. Consistency I think is the word we're looking for and the Leafs have lacked that lately and in the same way that the Leafs should be looking at Patrick Marlowe's effort, they should also be looking at Nazem Kadri's. Although maybe they want to show Nazem Kadri one other thing. So there seem to be two calls that had Leafs Nation particularly mad and I will get to both of them. All right. It's near the end of the game. We're very close to overtime, and the Leafs have tied it up. Thanks to Nazem Kadri. Hooray. In fact, at this point, the Leafs have a late game power play. Maybe even win this in regulation over a divisional rival? That'd be nice. Haha, <laughs> no. Kadri gets a cross check and it doesn't get called, and just for good measure, he gets a cross check again. Kadri gets up and retaliates with, guess what, a cross check, and that's the one that gets called. The power play is donezo, and heading into overtime, the Leafs will have some penalty to kill. Look, the refs missed it. The refs missed I'm not going to excuse it. The refs missed it. They goofed. But as so many of you said to me last game, refs make mistakes. But it's not fair! He did that, but it's only because he did that! Since when has NHL officiating ever been about justice? Look, if he cross-checks you, it's not called, and he comes up with the puck, the puck goes the other way, well, it's not really a problem because you're on the power play anyway. If he cross-checks you, there's no call, and nothing happens, well, then maybe you got a chance to fight for that puck again, create a scoring chance. If he cross-checks you, it's not called, and then you go ahead and cross-check him, you run the risk of it being called. And Matheson goes, ha, ha, ha. He has every right to. Mike Matheson, Bob Ross. Just because he blew the first two calls does not mean he's going to blow the third one. And your job as a player, not just as a player, but as an established vet in this league, Nas, is not to give him the third chance. We said this in the Montreal game. He gets the red mist. And for a player who is so good at getting the other team off of their game, you can throw Nazem Kadri off his game, and you can make it cost his team. Heading into this game, the Leafs were undefeated in overtime. They won every overtime game. Only one has gone to the shootout, and they won that. Now, they still had an opportunity to win. In fact, Jake Gardner had a fantastic chance, two of them in overtime, but by taking this penalty, you ran the risk that Florida was going to get a power play goal in overtime, and you also reduced the amount of time that the Leafs were on three on three, which is to their advantage, Nods! And then it goes to the shootout. I don't have much to say about that because these videos are about hockey. Barkov, what a monster. Marlowe's got a score, and he does. And then Bugstad, who had a great game, scores. Panthers win. Freddie went for the poke check. I don't blame him, but it's just when you miss the poke check, and you do, all you got to do is hang out there. Maybe if I just, maybe if mind tricks, he'll miss the net. Do something. I'm not saying throw your stick, but but like, throw your mask. They won't expect that. And as we saw earlier in the game, the rest were a little sleepy. Maybe they would have missed it. So the Panthers win the game, blah, 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 everyone said. Uh, the Matthews breakaway that some of you thought should have been a penalty and some of you thought should have been a penalty shot. So Flintor, who is a fantastic Twitter account that you need to follow, especially if you're a Leafs fan, they posted a slow motion gif of the whole sequence of events. It seems like Matthews is touched and tripped before the puck is even touched. Meaning that, yeah, two minutes for you can't do that. I'm not saying it should have been a penalty shot, but maybe tripping. But then I watched the play in real time, and in real time, it just looks like a fantastic defensive play. I know I'm not making a lot of people happy by saying that, but the first time I watched it in full speed, I was like, yeah, that looks different, doesn't it? And we joke about the refs being sleepy, but they do have an incredibly difficult job to do, and if I saw that play in real time on the ice, I, I think I would have made the same call. That's a lie, I'm a Leafs fan. I wanted him to get the penalty shot. Matthews, by the way, very critical of himself before this game, and then he gets eight shots. And he was supposed to play with Marner and Martin, and then didn't really, and then he played with Marner and Hyman. Speaking of Hyman, Hyman was taken out of this game by the concussion spotters. Uh, good for them. I'm sure he hated it, I'm sure he wanted to stay in the game, but he goes down hard, 
He's sitting there, kind of confused, and that, yeah, that's what the concussion spotters are for, man. That shenanigans-filled Kings game at the ACC earlier this year where Quick got pulled and then not pulled and then put back in, that was an example, I thought, where the concussion spotters should have jumped in and stayed jumped in. I thought that was exactly the kind of play they were there for, and then I look at the Hyman thing, yeah, that's exactly the kind of play that the concussion spotters' job was designed for. And what's more concerning is it's not really the first time this has happened to Hyman this season. That's like the second or third for sure that I can remember. Look, the season is long. The Leafs are in a good position. Babcock clearly likes Hyman on Matthews' wing. Babcock clearly likes Hyman killing penalties. Babcock clearly likes Hyman. If it's necessary, take Hyman out of the lineup, put Dominic Moore back in the lineup, and throw Sosh wherever you want, wherever your heart desires. Maybe you throw him in Hyman's slot. Maybe you put Connor Brown in Hyman's slot. That seems to make a lot of sense to me. Matthews with Brown and either Marner or Nylander. Okay, look. You have the players that you have because you find them to be important, yes? All right, treat them as such. And if it turns out Hyman's fine, one, I'll shut up, two, wonderful! So there's a few things that have been bugging me. The Leafs' effort as of late, uh, consistency, getting killed in the first 10 minutes of the game. God, what do we got to do to get Nylander a goal? But at the end of the day, I'm going to be thankful for American fake Thanksgiving. That's right, Canadian Thanksgiving is better because it comes before Halloween and you're supposed to have dinner before your dessert. Don't you know that? But never mind all that. Here, I think, is why I woke up on the right side of the bed today. Right now, the Leafs are fifth place in the league. Actually, tied for third if we're splitting hairs. Look, the Leafs haven't been perfect, but no team in the NHL is. Maybe Tampa. There is a lot of hockey to be played. There are some things to be concerned about, but you know what? Right now, the Leafs are in an enviable position. I think they needed a game like this, okay? They needed it because they got shelled in the first 10 minutes like they always have been, but... They were great the rest of the game. In fact, it's a miracle that they didn't come away with the win. Roberto Luongo was fantastic. Stood on his head the entire time. He, he did a James Reimer impression, if you ask me. That's my opinion. The Leafs needed to lose a game that they deserved to win. Because so far this season, they've won a bunch of games that they deserve to lose. I think games like this bug you. Even though you came away with the point, they bug you. A team that is 100% satisfied with itself is complacent. I don't want that. So be happy but be vigilant. We're barely past the quarter way mark. Long way to go. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Brand new Panago Pizza Steve Dangle podcast is coming today. Check out 31 Thoughts by Elliot Friedman. You might like thought number 18. And help me get to 100,000 subscribers. Coffee's expensive. That's not even true. Just help me do it!